Alright, what's up everybody, back with another patch notes, breakdown, and discussion video. It's going to be for the Omega Strikers 2.2 update, which actually got released a couple hours ago. At least when I'm recording this. You guys might be seeing this later, we'll see how it goes, or like a day or two afterwards, depending on when I get it uploaded. I'm not going to be too much on screen, I'll be going through the Steam patch notes. These are all on Steam, you guys want to check them out for yourselves. There are some major updates for this patch. A bunch of balance, a bunch of bug fixes, a bunch of quality of life changes we've been asking for for I don't know how long already. And we finally got them. A lot of stuff to actually be positive about and just skimming the patch notes. There's a lot of good stuff here. So, I'm going to talk about everything. If you guys like these videos, leave a like, subscribe, share the video. Not going to be too much on screen. I'm going to kind of just talk about the patch notes on screen. I don't know if I'll throw some gameplay in the background or something. But if you guys want to just tap out and listen to me talk as well, that'd be completely fine. But I got the 2.2 update notes. These are live right now if you guys want to check them out, like I said. Um, some major stuff they're actually putting into the game. With the surrender system. They're finally giving us the option to have a surrender system. And uh, also an inactive system. So if somebody is inactive and disconnects from the match, they're also applied to players that haven't played and made any inputs from 40 seconds or whatever. Everyone on the team, not including inactive players, must have voted to surrender for a, a surrender to occur so that kind of sucks that you, everybody has to vote for a surrender but it's in the game now they can always make changes to it that's the main thing it's also in normal and competitive modes so you also have to be down by two sets so if, if somebody is up like 2-0 the team that's down by a two has the option to surrender so I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but like 90% of my ranked teams, like the game's last five minutes, I'm going to be surrendering a lot of my matches. So I, that's a great thing for for ranks, especially for the game, because it means people have to just don't leave the game as much, because another major problem with the game right now is just people randomly leave during the match because there's no surrender option, and they don't want to sit there and play a game that they're going to end up losing is the main thing. Including myself, I do the same thing sometimes, depending on my teammates. So, huge W, huge W for the surrender system. Auto match cancel system. If player is detected as inactive early on into the match, the match will automatically cancel. This is another huge change. So, if you're going, you load into a match, and at the first, the start of the game, if somebody's inactive, the match will just cancel itself, and you'll just go back into the queue, and. Penalties will not incur if you or a pre-made member caused an auto-match cancel, and it was the first time within the last two weeks. So if you do it for one time, you won't get any penalties, but if it keeps happening, you'll start getting penalties and stuff like that, so. It also, it, a player that causes the automatic match cancel cancellation will be penalized as if they had lost the match. This penalty will also apply to players in their pre-made groups if they queued up together. So if you're queuing with somebody and somebody in your party actually leaves, then you will also actually get a penalty if you're just in the party with them. And if you're solo queuing and you leave, then you get a penalty if it's the, if you do it more than once in the span of two weeks. So that's huge. Competitive mode integrity changes. Players above challenger will no longer be able to enter competitive mode in a pre-made group. That's a huge change. A lot of this shit doesn't really affect me because I'm still grinding my way up to like silver at this point i'm almost silver tier so players that solo queue in any rank will benefit from higher minimum rating gains if they win a match to balance out cases where they had to fill into a match that is less than ideal so you'll get more points now if you actually are, are put into a match that is not even around your rank and if you lose those type of matches you'll lose less points because the match making is not ideal wow if only Paladins would have something like that, that'd be great. Or any of the high-risk games, even even like Apex, I guess. Apex will never do that, but there's a lot of games that would really benefit from doing something like that. That's a huge change. New ranked tier, Pro League. This is the top players from each region that can qualify. So pretty much it's a new thing to where whatever region you're actually playing in, the top 100 players that are in the game can qualify to get into the top 100 and then you get on a leaderboard for your region. Pretty much simple, that's what it really is, what Pro League is. I'm not going to talk about it very much because for like 99.9% .9 of the players, it won't really even apply to them. MVP, there is no longer a multiplier that will weigh events 
more favorably later in the game for the purpose of determining the end game, be end of game MVP. So if, if you're carrying the match the entirety of the game, you will for sure get the MVP now. Unlike before, where you would have somebody randomly on your team pop, pop off in the last couple rounds of the match and then happen to get the entire game MVP, so. Which always would happen. I don't know. I would carry like 90% of my games and then somebody would happen to pop off towards the end of the match and then they would somehow get MVP over me for some reason, even though I would carry the match for 90% of the game. No longer going to be a problem. That's a huge change. Game content refund system. All accounts start with three refund tokens that you can use to refund elig eligible content. Details on how to use this can be found on our site, whatever. So it's pretty much the same thing Fortnite has. Fortnite also has the same thing, which is great. Maps and modes. A bunch of maps are getting some changes. Night Market and Oni Village are going to be getting the core speed bonus going to be an increase and the max bonus is going to be getting increased from 2000 to 2100 night market core speed boost will more consistently grant speed up to 2100 and then there was a bug fix so and then practice mode they finally gave us practice mode y'all i don't know how long people have been asking for practice mode we finally have it so now the people that don't have like all the strikers unlocked can actually go play the strikers and play like their abilities and everything in a practice mode instead of a bot match or like a real match instead of ruining it for real people which is huge again uh, the, a lot, all this stuff like keep in mind like up until this point all of this stuff is stuff that people have been wanting and they actually listen and they add it to the game I know it's crazy y'all a game that actually listens to its player base and actually makes changes and additions to the game to what their players want it's crazy. Unlike a bunch of other games. <clears throat> Hi, Riz. Sorry about that. I had a little little cough there. I, I don't know. I kind of have allergies today, so I gotta gotta bear with me, y'all. Strikers. We got some striker balance. Imee's getting some range from her. I think that's her primary from 980 down to 900. She's still gonna be really good. Asher, huge bug fix. Her pr primary barrier beam shield no longer occasionally lets the core pass through, which was a huge fix. That would happen way too much. Era. Set a, a bug fix for her secondary. Resolved issue where quick cast of her secondary in succession with twin drive will not correctly apply full duration. That was a huge bug fix. And then a Juliet fix that will actually make her incredibly good because her alt was not actually actually hitting hard enough it was only giving a light hit from sometimes and not being able to let people evade before the final hit so i don't know, i think that makes her even 10 times better than she was raw moose you're actually able to use awakenings that actually are able to buff creations now with death touch his special because it actually it's classified as that now and it's also actually getting a cooldown decrease by two seconds so that's really cool. So anything that's a creation, creation-based awakening, and now affects Raw Moose is special. Octavia. Now, this is like the only balance change I don't really agree with. I don't think Octavia is that good unless you have like a pre-made team and like a three stack. In solo queue, Octavia really isn't that good, and she's really awakening dependent. You gotta run like a bunch of the speed type awakenings to actually make her good. So she's really situational in that sense. I don't know why they're really changing the the cooldowns on her secondary for flow state, which is her buff when she hits the core or like hits anything and does damage, does anything, she gets the speed boost. They're increasing it by 2 seconds, they're reducing the duration by a 0.5 second, and they're also reducing the speed boost by 0.5%, which is huge. So I, only buffs, buffs and like balance changes I don't necessarily agree with because Somebody that's been playing a lot of Octavia, I don't think she's incredibly good. Like I said, she's really dependent on if you actually have a team that plays with you. And in, in solo queuing, that's not really the case most of the time. Or unless you're stacking. And if you actually are able to get a bunch of, like, her awakenings, that actually buffs speed. Because she's really... that's what she builds the best. So... Vice picked a, a bug fix. Nothing really crazy. I'm not going to talk about it. Zentaro... 
indicator now shows full area he'll hit instead of now location of his dash. This would be much more accurate to enemies now. Note it also seemed bigger for Zentara, but his range is also unchanged, so for a secondary. Got a bit of a, a quality of life buff. And then the Oni Blade got got some bug fixes, which make it a lot better. Gear balance changes. Pummelers. Gear is sitting in a relatively balanced place. Pummelers are going to be getting a 20, 15 to 20% 20 speed boost. Bit of a buff. Which is huge because that's the main item actually run on Vice. So that actually affects me. I uh, got a few awakenings. All these, a bunch of awakenings are going to be getting bug fixes. And uh, Prime Time is getting a bit of a nerf by 5%. And then Super Surge is going to be getting a buff by 5%. They're rotating a number of awakenings out, and they're actually putting a bunch of new awakenings in, which are actually really cool. Egoist, brand new. Evades refund 5 energy, 15 from energy bursts. Reaching the match, max energy grant, 75% speed for 8 seconds. Reducing to 5% speed while you remain at max energy. So that would be really good on something like Octavia or something like the more... The, the, uh, the strikers that really need speed or want to move around a lot faster. Catalyst. New, new gain 50% more energy from dealing hits. Being hit generates 3 energy. So this is a huge. If, you really, if you're somebody that really likes to be aggressive and you're playing like aggressive striker, like the, that type of play style, you're constantly hitting the core or, or do it, doing damage. You, you're constantly going to be able to have enough energy for core flips or evades or that type of thing. So really cool. Fire up, new, a brand new awakening being rotated in. Gain 10 energy on the start of a round. Casting energy burst restores 30% of max energy to other allies and speed. So, kind of a, a small change. And then reverberation, gain 250 max stagger. So another new stagger type awakening. I don't know how good that'll be. And then some bug fixes. I don't know if I'll really talk about any of these, but they're kind of, I don't know, uh, kind of run, skim through these. Uh, none of these are really that crazy. Vice gets KO'd. She was using special supernova. The VFX will no longer remain playing for the entire match. This is actually a huge one right here. I actually had that happen to me multiple times. You would actually alt, and then you would get KO'd during your alt, and the effects from your alt would be sitting in, like, in the middle of the field for like the entire match. So... Apart from that, there's not really much here. Overall, y'all, I think 2.2, this update was a huge W. And I don't think there's really anything to be negative about here. Like that, that is the real upside with this game. And the one thing I really like about this game so far is that the, the updates and the, like, the mini patches are consistent. There's always something new. They are always releasing mini balance updates or mini quality of life changes every like one, two weeks. And then when the major updates hit, it is a slew of stuff that actually makes the game better, whether it's bug fixers or quality of life changers or new additions to the game. It's great. I don't think there was anything that's really negative here at all. Like the only thing I think that was like the most, at least for me personally, was like the Octavia balance changes. But apart from that, I have no complaints about anything else. And that is really rare playing, being somebody that plays high res games and a bunch of other shit like Blizzard games, Overwatch 2, and a bunch of other stuff. So. I don't know, y'all. Like people say, I'm I'm not nothing but negative, but uh, they, apparently they don't, they don't watch the Omega Strikers patch notes videos because uh, everything here is actually positive. I don't think I explained that all really at a, that much. Apart, like I said, apart from the Octavia changes, but like apart from that, this has all been positive. Everything here is great. I have no complaints about anything else. Huge W of a patch. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I got it. Also, going to be doing another tier list here within the next week or two. It's been a while since I did a tier list. We got a bunch of new strikers added to the game, a bunch of balance changes, and I've gotten way better at the game and that type of thing since the last one. So, I'll be updating this the striker tier list here for 2.2 in a couple days or up to next, probably sometime next week. Apart from that, I'm going to get out of here. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for stopping by.